Okay, let's uh, pray and then we can uh, begin. Uh, Father, thank you for the uh, privilege uh, to teach on your word. Father and I pray as we work through uh, James, uh, um, open our hearts and our uh, minds, Lord, for what you want to uh, teach us. Holy Spirit, may you minister to our hearts as we work uh, through your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. So, uh, so chapter three and four, and actually chapter five, is uh, so combined into one section that deals with um, how to speak. Uh, so chapter one, verse one to one, verse 18, deals with how we should think. Um, uh, so, uh, so chapter 1 verse 19 to uh, so chapter 2 verse uh, so 26 deals with how we should act, that faith without action is useless. And then uh, so chapter 3 and 4 and 5 deals with how we should speak um, with the focus on the uh, so, uh, so problem child, which is the so tongue. Um, and that uh, so the tongue, so combined with with wisdom, should be the way that we speak. Uh, so let's go into uh, so chapter three, uh, so taming the so tongue, um, and this section deals with how to speak. In uh, and uh, uh, so keep in mind the rich versus the so poor. How the rich and the uh, so poor speak uh, against one another is the so context of the rest of the uh, chapters of James. So I'm going to read through every verse and then um, I've, I've highlighted some words that I made notes on that I would just like to go into deeper um, just to um, assist in bringing the word alive. Not many of you should become a uh, teachers, my brother, for you know that we should uh, that we who teach will, will be judged with, uh, with great strictness. So, first, James is uh, addressing those who would like to become uh, teachers. James uh, addresses religious fluency. We saw in uh, chapter two already that religious fluency is the is the idea that you can only believe something and uh, talk about something that you believe in, but not act on it. The lust of uh, teaching, the rage for sarcasm. Uh, Casual, uh, uh, talk meaning just uh, so talking about what you believe and not actually living it out, which is the character of Pharisaic piety. If you think back on the on the attitude that the Pharisees had when when uh, Jesus dealt with them, they had the sense of re re uh, religiousness but not living out what they believe. Um, that's what James is also uh, uh, suggesting here. And he uses the word we, including himself, in those who he warns uh, against uh, his teachings, not just those who, who want to become teachers, but James himself includes himself in the, in the warning that he gives. Then in verse uh, uh, so 2, James shifts from the from the public uh, teaching platform to the personal uh, teaching and the personal um, way of uh, talking. For we all stumble in many ways, meaning we all are without sin. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man. And there's no such thing as apart from, from uh, uh, so Jesus. And he's saying this to include everyone, even even the uh, so teachers or the uh, so Jewish believers that would think that they are without fault, even they are not able to exclude themselves from what uh, so, uh, so James is saying because no one is perfect. Uh, a a so perfect so control of so the tongue would mean a so perfect life, but we all fail. Only Jesus was able to be perfect. Able also to brittle his whole uh, uh, body. Then James uses two illustrations. 
illustrations or so comparisons for so the tongue. If we so put bits into the mouths of horses so they obey us, we so guide their whole bodies as well. That small um, uh, thing uh, so, so can guide the movement of the whole horse. And also look at the, the ships also, though they are so large and are driven by uh, strong winds, they are so guided by a very small rudder, the will of the so pilots so direct. And he's using these illustrations, which would be very common in the Mediterranean um, because um, it had rich um, uh, sea life. So uh, the boats and how a uh, boat or, or a ship work, works would not be un uh, common to everyone. And he's using those examples to which would be e easy to understand for everyone to illustrate the, the, the power of a small instrument. And then he goes on, so also the, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. James uh, so compares the, the tongue to the, the bit in a horse's mouth, a rudder of a ship, a fire, a world of unrighteousness, restless evil, and a, a deadly poison. So the tongue is all of those things, and it goes into uh, so dealing with uh, uh, so gossiping going on, and uh, so gossip being a form of a uh, speech and showing that the damage that a gossiping can do is how great a forest fire is set ablaze by such a small fire, how fast a rumor can spread, and how much damage it can do when unleashed. It's the spread and the speed of a rumor. And the tongue is a fire, a, a, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, set on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. So the tongue in verse 6, uh, so, so the tongue represents or constitutes the unrighteous world, everything that is unrighteous and not from the God that the hearers are acting on. And then he goes on to say the um, setting on fire there in the entire course of life. And James is emphasizing the effect the tongue has on the person himself. It's how how our how our um, um, evil speech can have a uh, damaging effect on us uh, so controlling our whole life. Uh, verse 7, just say if I should slow down, okay, <laughs> verse 7, for every kind of beast and bird or of reptile and sea creatures that can be tamed and has been attained by, by humankind, once again, James is referring to, to mankind's rule on the animal uh, kingdom, man's rule on, 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 on earth and over uh, creation, as we see in Genesis, um, but no human being so can tame the uh, so tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we so curse people who are made in the likeness of a so God. So, uh, so cursing verse 9 is uh, uh, so curse that uh, so James so condemns springs from, from uh, so bitterness. That is, uh, it's explained later. Um, who and with it, we curse uh, so people who are made in the likeness of a, a God. And he's, with that, he's, he's, he's emphasizing the, the caution the hearers should, should have in, in speaking badly about one another, because uh, speaking badly of someone that has, uh, was made in the likeness of a God is equal to uh, uh, speaking bad uh, against God, the one who, who created us. And he's saying, verse uh, uh, 13, from the same mouth comes blessing and as a cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. He's rebuking the, the way that they are acting as against one another. Um, and this uh, so cursing is an uh, antagonistic speech. So cursing is incompatible with the worship of a, a God 
blessing God and as uh, cursing your neighbor cannot happen in the same vessel is, is what he's focusing on. Uh, does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? He's saying, he's using an illustration uh, so to prove the inconsistency of blessing and uh, so cursing that they cannot happen at the same time and they should not happen. And he's saying ne neither can, oh, sorry. And, and he follows up with a few uh, rhetorical uh, questions. James uses a lot of rhetorical uh, uh, questions to emphasize the, the point that he wants to, to, to make. So, so, so can both fresh and salt water uh, so come from the same opening? Uh, so can a fig tree, my brothers bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? The answer is no to all of them. Neither can salt, uh, neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. It's a rhetoric emphasis that James uses to focus on the urgencies to tame the uh, uh, tongue. That if if we if the hearers believe in in a, a God and salvation in a, a Jesus, their life and their speech should match what they believe. It's it's um, uh, going back to the main theme of of uh, Sir James, where faith without actions is is useless. And if you have faith but you do not live it out in the way that you think, act, and speak, then your faith needs some, some, some work. Then he goes into wisdom from as uh, above. He's saying, some who wanted to be teachers of wisdom were teaching the sort of wisdom espoused by Jewish revolutionaries, which led to violence. So in the context that they were uh, two groups that we need to keep in mind. Uh, the Jewish revolutionaries uh, that, that James mentions that had no problem with murdering someone and the Jewish aristocrats, uh, normally the, the rich in this um, setting uh, so could form part of them thinking that they are better than the, than the poor exalting themselves. Um, above the poor and that is just that's a situation that James is uh, uh, addressing which is wrong in the church so who is wise and, and understanding among you by his uh, a good economy let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom this goes back to verse 1 verse 5 Wisdom is not only in a intellectual, it is shown by a, a good life that if you, if you believe or if you have received a, a true wisdom and a, so, so God has revealed to you wisdom and you don't live it out, then you don't have that wisdom, then that, that is false wisdom. But if you have a, a wisdom which comes from, from, from God, it is shown by a uh, so good life. So putting faith into action, as previously mentioned, uh, so to act on the wisdom that God reveals. In uh, chapter 2, uh, we, we saw that if you have faith without works, then, you're, then your faith is useless. In that when uh, so God reveals wisdom and we don't act on it, then we are uh, so disobedient to the wisdom that, that has, uh, so God has shown. And thus we are living in foolishness and not wisdom. By his uh, so good uh, so conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Uh, so good life marked by me meekness and not pride, which is the opposite of meekness is a so bitter and envy, which he he's, uh, goes on and lists in verse 14. But if you have a uh, so bitter jealousy and selfish and uh, submission in your hearts, do not boast and be false uh, to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from as above, but it is earthly, un, un, unspiritual, and even uh, demonic. So, uh, so, uh, so James is really emphasizing this. Uh, and uh, so demonic wisdom is violent wisdom. It's, it's, it's wisdom that leads so to violence, 
where wisdom that comes from, from God that we will see later is a superior, peaceable, gentle, and open for reason, and full of mercy and has good fruits, meaning it uh, bears a life showing all of, all of that. For where uh, so jealousy and self-ambition exist, there will be so there's order and every vile practice. Every vile practice, practice um, one guy says, if these things uh, uh, so characterized us, meaning if any of that applies so to us, that we live in, uh, in a, a, a jealousy, selfish and a vision and all of that, though we may boast about our wisdom, our whole life is a, is a denial of the, uh, the truth revealed in us, uh, Jesus. But the wisdom from us above is first superior, then peaceable, gentle, I'm, I'm open to reason, full of mercy and as, as a good fruit, in as a partial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in, in a peace by those who so make peace. Wisdom that comes from above, James is making a, a comparison so, so between earthly wisdom and a, and a heavenly wisdom. Uh, so comparison between earthly false wisdom and heavenly uh, so true wisdom. So God's wisdom is not violent, but peace. Um, James mentions that uh, her true wisdom is in a partial amongst other things. He is emphasizing not her to be partial as against the rich and the poor. God's wisdom is in a partial and so should their uh, conduct also be if they follow uh, her true wisdom. If we follow uh, a true wisdom that comes from God, we will live it out and we will act it, it out. And in this uh, a context that James is writing the later to the Jews in a, a dispersion is that in the uh, churches, they showed a, a partiality between rich and a, a poor, where they uh, gave the rich seat of, of honor, but the poor had, had to sit on um, the not so nice seats um, where the rich were so defended but the, the, uh, the poor were being so dishonored. So in a, uh, so, uh, so chapter three, he, James focuses on the uh, damage of the tongue and he warns both rich and the poor that they need to control their tongue in the way they 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 live in harmony in a, 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 a society of the church and he says that if they hold a, a, a true wisdom they will be in a, a partial and it will show in the way that they uh, treat one another in their in their speech and then he goes on to warn us against wilderness um, just want to read this so, uh, so God's wisdom was not the, the, the populist wisdom of the revolutionaries, meaning God's wisdom was not uh, popular among the Jewish revolutionaries who wanted to overthrow the rich. Thus, those whose faith was genuine so could not waver between so the two options. James uh, addresses here many of so the poor, the uh, suppressed who are uh, 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 attempted to try to overthrow their oppressors and seize their goods. So in the eyes of uh, so the poor, they envied uh, the rich and the rich uh, uh, treated uh, the poor. And um, uh, so James is uh, addressing that. What's, what, and he says in uh, for this one, what so causes uh, so quarrels and what so causes fights uh, amongst you? He's asking uh, so questions. So the quarrels is social, lawsuits, rivalries, so partiality, and the rich versus uh, so, so the poor. Is it not this that your so passions are at war within you? Meaning your so passions and, and uh, so desires is not in line with uh, so God. Hence, there's uh, so quarrels, and he says, "You 
use use a desire and do not have so you murder you covered and as a cannot ascertain so you fight and as a quarrel I'm sorry you ask okay let's just do do that uh, so desire is a, 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 a diatribe meaning James is having a imaginary uh, so dialogue with an invisible uh, uh, opponent in their letter, but it uh, addresses a, a, a social situ uh, situation and is using hyperbole or sociographic rhetorical exaggeration for effect. Most of James's readers have uh, so presumably not literally killed anyone, but they are, they are exposed to the violent uh, so, uh, so teachers, those who rival them up to want to act in, 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 in violence uh, against the, the rich. Um, but also uh, assassinations were not un as common for unbelieving Jews. You covered and uh, cannot ascertain, so you find and as a quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Verse three, you ask and uh, so do not receive because you ask wrongly. So to, to spend it on your passion. Um, once again, as a passion and a, as a desire is wrongly misplaced and wrongly because they ask based on envy of others as well or status. They are not asking in as a prayer for a genuine need because their passions are not aligned with uh, God's will. And James' emphasis on wrong selfish fo focus and as, and, and as a passion for the world. He says, you as adulterous the people, do you not know that friendship with the world is, is enmity with us, God? Therefore, whoever wishes so to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of us, God. Friendship with the world um, one guy, Adam uh, Satibar, wrote, James realizes the practical implications of uh, Jesus' lordship. If we are his so disciples, then his way of doing things, his uh, kingdom will be reflected in the way we do things. Uh, uh, so, uh, so tragically, uh, so too many Christians shape the world uh, according to the principles opposed to God's way of doing things, the world. I'm not opting for this uh, or supposing system is friendship with the world. In doing so, we not only affect our, our private lives, but influence the culture around us. Made in God's image, each, each as a person is a, as a given a sphere, a, a sphere of impact, a relational realm where the uh, choices have immediate effect. Uh, so parent, friend, uh, so child, employee, each role in a uh, tale's culture shaping so decisions. In reality, we will make these so decisions based on our loyalties. Meaning, will we buy a, a so car that, that we cannot afford so to in a suppress people that we don't even like versus humbly submitting ourselves uh, so to God and only buying what we need for the so basic function that it has? And James is, is um, saying that they, they are asking to God in a service of prayer, but they are not asking God for things that they need. They are asking God out of a place of want and a desire, out of envy and a, a, a jealousy and selfishness. And a God does not respond. And he says in verse five, or, or do you suppose it is uh, so to no purpose that uh, the uh, scripture says, so just to bring us as a context, so the Bible um, that, uh, so Jesus's Bible, if we can say this, that was the Old Earth Testament. James's Bible was the Old Earth Testament. So Paul's Bible was the Old Earth uh, Testament. So they would uh, uh, so quote from the Old uh, Testament, and uh, James so quotes the Old uh, uh, Testament, but that verse, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made so to dwell 
dwell in us is not found anywhere because James uses his uh, paraphrasing a lot of verses to combine into one, meaning that um, uh, the word does say that. Um, James is mashing together various uh, uh, texts. Oh, sorry. Um, James is mashing together various uh, texts and uh, paraphrasing Exodus uh, 20 verse 5, use Deuteronomy 32 verse uh, 21, Joel uh, 2 verse 18. God will, and he's saying that uh, God will uh, tolerate no, no competition for its affection. But he gives, therefore, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God uh, supposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Uh, Proverbs 3, verse 34, that he's uh, uh, quoting in the second quote. And he says, I just want to read that yearns part. The spirit's the desire to have us holy to himself. God desires us so to have himself holy for himself, not to so divide our uh, affection to the world, but to focus on us for God and to in verse 7, submit yourselves, therefore, said to God, resist the, the devil and he will flee from you. Submit, one must uh, choose between the values of, of a God and those of the world. Uh, so between God's wisdom and wisdom, which is uh, a demonic, the person who lives by God's value is not part of, uh, the, the person who lives by God's values is no part of Satan's uh, uh, kingdom. And your, yourselves, James is emphasizing to focus on as a God and not on the world. He's uh, uh, addressing so the poor, so to say, do not long after what the rich have, but submit yourself to God's will and his will and what, what he wants. Therefore, James does not only uh, uh, tell the hearers of this later to submit so to God, but also reveals behavior they are to follow so to submit to God. He so goes on and says, how do we draw near so to God? How, how do we submit ourselves so to God? He says, resist the so devil and he will flee from you. Draw near so to God and he will draw near so, so to you. Cleanse your hands, make yourself clean to so confess your sins. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and as a purify your hearts. So, uh, so purify your your so desires so to, to desire what God so desires and not what the world so desires. Uh, so to desire what God has for them and not what the rich have. You you uh, so double minded, and he just ends that verse. You 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 so double minded. You double minded is one must act from either God's peaceful wisdom or the devil's hateful wisdom it's the theme that wisdom living out of faith versus only believing but not acting they are uh, so double-minded meaning they believe one thing but they don't act on what they believe be wretched and mourn and weep let your love to be turned to, to mourning and your joy so to gloom humble yourself before the lord and he will exalt you James is saying for the rich and uh, so the poor, humble your, yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. So the poor would find, um, would find a, a comfort that God will exalt them, um, that as a God would make, would bring high the, the poor and, and bring low the rich that we saw in a, a, a chapter one. And now he's going, now he's uh, so continuing it's almost as if verse 11 and uh, uh, 12 is on its own. It can either be a, uh, a continuation of the previous paragraph or the beginning of the following uh, as a paragraph. But either way, he's saying, do not speak evil against one as another brothers. The one who speaks as against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil as against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge, meaning you, you take it on yourself to be made higher than the law. There is only one law to give and a judge, 
to he who is able so to save and to destroy, which is God. But who are you so to judge your neighbor? So just to go into that, do not speak evil against one another. Do not speak. James is uh, addressing the worldly behavior which his readers are following, harsh and violent speech, acting un unbrotherly, not living out the law, so to love your neighbor as yourself, not following, not following law of uh, so God's love for one uh, another, so to slander a fellow Jew is uh, so to disrespect this law. His audience is Jews, that's why. So to slander a fellow Jew, it can also be a fellow uh, so Christian is uh, so to disrespect to love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor, which we see in uh, so, uh, so, uh, so chapter two, verse eight, James is emphasizing the unbrotherly so conduct that is happening in so the church. Uh, the one who speaks uh, so against his, his brother, abuse of the so tongue so to judge others. And then uh, so judge at the end, I want to read something that I wrote uh, so together. Judgment, James is uh, addressing the so critical spirit within so the church where believers are not loving one another, but criticizing one another. Unbrotherly love, James is rebuking such behavior. Judgment mentioned by James is not referring to rebuking, exhorting or and as uh, so correcting a brother in love. It is uh, addressing the surpassing of judgment and a so critical attitude inside the church where the rich and the, the so poor criticized one as another. James is rebuking a so particular critical spirit inside the church where believers show no uh, appreciation for one another, meaning they are going as against to love one as another. James is uh, addressing the sin of a so partiality, meaning meaning the rich are being given seats of honor and the poor are treated badly, which is a major theme in this letter. Unfair judgment, which supposes this unity, being critical with one another is uh, so destructive and does not build up one as another. We have this um, in our culture where if you want to so correct a brother in love, they normally respond and do not judge me. Um, there's a, uh, a difference between judgment and a uh, so correction. Judgment in the sense of uh, so condemning someone, uh, that's only up uh, so to God, uh, where the whole of uh, so, so the Bible you know, so encourages us for the sake of our brother to uh, so correct them and rebuke them in love. James is in saying this, he's rebuking so, so the church for their Un, uh, so godly conduct, but he's not uh, so condemning them. Um, but who are you so to judge your brothers, uh, so to criticize? We, we need to read so the Bible in a so context and verses like this, we need to take into so context, okay, what is James actually so, saying to the original audience? He's saying, uh, so, uh, so do not be judgmental with one as uh, uh, so another, meaning being so critical with one another. And, and then he goes on and goes further into wisdom that flows out from a, a, a speech. So, so come now, you who say, so today or so tomorrow, we will go into such and such a uh, town and spend a year there and as, as a trade and make uh, as a profit. Yet you do not know what so tomorrow will bring what is your life? For you are a midst that uh, appears for a little time and then vanishes, meaning life goes by so fast. And in uh, uh, so chapter five, he flows into how easily so, so the riches um, fade away. In uh, stead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you, you boast in your arrogance all such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails so to do it for him, it is sin. So just to um, summarize what James is saying is he's um, focusing on, on wisdom that we, we need to submit our so desires uh, so to God's will and not our will. Um, 
James is drawing focus so to God's will, not their own will, which is foolishness. Mark of a, a true wisdom is so to follow God's will and not the will of self or of the world. Uh, so, uh, so to follow so, so the passions of the world, but to follow so the passions for, uh, for God. So whoever knows the right thing so to do and fails so to do it for him, it is sin. James does not deny the possibility of a sin of ignorance, but he is emphasizing sinning as against the, the light. Um, if we bring this in the, the theme of what James is saying, having faith but not living out the faith, faith but no action, not following in the wisdom that God has revealed. And, and he's basically saying that following, not following in what God has revealed is a sin. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is a sin. And that uh, concludes uh, this uh, session uh, so tonight. Um, and we will go in on Sunday into uh, so, uh, so chapter five, which is the uh, which is a, uh, a continuation of how, so to speak, um, and how that impacts the hero's life. And then we will go into application. Okay, now that we know what the book of James is saying. How do we apply that to our lives? Um, and uh, so depending, uh, there might be another session on Wednesday where I would like to go into uh, the rhetorical uh, so questions that James asked, the symbolisms, the illustrations, just to open up more of a, uh, so James. James is a, is a difficult letter in the sense that you can read it every time, and every time something will will uh, speak to our hearts um, and minister to us um, as we are growing in our relationship with uh, as God. There's always something that God reveals that we need to deal with us. And when we read uh, the Bible, we need to pray, God, to come and uh, uh, to change me so that I can be more like you. What in this is... What in this are you revealing to me that I need to change about myself? Because when we are reading so the Bible, we, we are dealing with so, so the person of Jesus Christ sitting on the other side. And we need to uh, so change so to be more like him. And we need to invite God into our hearts so that we can change in what he reveals to us. And just as James focuses on, on, on wisdom that that the wisdom that God reveals, we need to, um, they need to act on in the same way we need to act on what God reveals us uh, so to change in our own lives. Um, I, re I remember um, when I was in a, uh, as a Bible college, I, I uh, prayed and said, God, I have a, a problem relating with, um, with men in a, a general. Um, I'm the older men. Uh, because all the men, um, as for most young uh, so people, re resemble a father figure or an authority figure. And there was something in my heart not, not in line with uh, so God's word. And I, and, I, um, 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 and I had to ask God, uh, how, what do you want me to do so that I can change this in my heart? And as, as, as God just laid on my heart that whenever a man would come uh, such a minister at the college, I just need to go up and uh, uh, give him a, a hug to break that wall that, uh, so that I put up. And God revealing that to me leaves me with uh, so the, so the responsibility to actually go and do it and not just know it but not act on it in the same way. Uh, uh, so James deals with with wisdom that when God reveals His His wisdom, when uh, so the truth is revealed, we need to act on it. Because if we don't act on it, then we don't really know the uh, so truth. So I just want to leave that there. If there's any uh, questions, um, I'd like to answer them. I just want to close in a so prayer, then we can ask and uh, so talk. Uh, Father, thank you for the uh, so, uh, so privilege. I ask, I pray, Lord, that that you will uh, so, uh, so continue the work that that you began in us. 
Father, re reveal to us areas in our lives that's not submitting under your will. Uh, so desires that's not um, uh, submitted into your will. Father, uh, Father, come and change us so to be more like you. May you stir revival in our hearts where we make you and your word in as important as again. And may it ignite a fire in our hearts uh, so to go out and live for you. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.